if the European Union were to begin to expand, the output would go up. That's what expansion means. Output would go up. Revenue would increase to the government because people's incomes going up. They, they would pay more taxes and the uh, deficits would uh, uh, disappear. During the Brexit campaign, there was rarely any discussions about the EU treaties. But what changes to the EU treaties could have benefited the UK? Mr. Like you're quite right. Uh, I did quite a bit of um, um, work in the sense of organizing meetings and discussions and presentations. And it was uh, quite appalling, really, how little people knew about the uh, uh, EU treaties and the uh, misinformation. What could have been done? Um, the issue was uh, immigration. Um, that is what the, uh, the people who wanted out uh, stressed. In retrospect, it is very hard to know what the European Union and the European Commission could have done to change that perception. Um, the, uh, the arguments made by the Remain people that uh, Britain gains from, um, uh, from immigration, which are certainly true, uh, made, I think, absolutely no difference. What changes could have been made? I suppose that if there had been some major re limitation on the uh, freedom of access, uh, uh, that might have made some difference, but, but that was never going to occur. And I think the, the minor things uh, which uh, might have been possible coming out of Brussels would have made no difference whatsoever. So, in the, uh, put it in a nutshell, people were pretty ignorant of the, the treaties. Uh, the, the out people voted on the basis of migration. I think the in people did too. And the, uh, there's probably nothing that could have been done to change those perceptions. So in the recent EU meeting in Bratislava, there was rarely any talk about economic provisions of the EU treaties. How can the European Union initiate change to these treaties? Good, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was, um, uh, it was almost a comedy, uh, what went on in Bratislava. The, uh, uh, beforehand, uh, talk about it being an existential, facing an existential crisis when they got there, they all went around telling each other, no, I really with, isn't so bad, is it? You know, I mean, yes, well, we've had some problems, but we'll sort it out. The problem with changing uh, the rules is it's very awkward. You have to have many of the things which need to be changes are actually written into treaties, either into the Maastricht Treaty, Lisbon Treaty, or into the uh, new uh, treaty called uh, Treaty on uh, Stability, Coordination, and Governance. Those require unanimous consent of all governments. Uh, very hard to get. What has generally happened in the past is that a new treaty has been piled on top of the second one. All right. So, so how, what might you put in that new treaty? I would say they need to have a more rational set of fiscal rules, which are now completely uh, uh, dis, uh, dysfunctional, and the need to change the uh, mandate of the uh, European Central Bank. Those are the main things that need to be done. So what kind of reforms are needed in the public sector deficit to survive in the Eurozone economically? The first point to make is that the uh, public sector deficits uh, now are no longer very serious problems in the European Union. Uh, I was looking at the data the other day and there is no country with a deficit which is threatening uh, stability uh, anymore. The main change that needs to occur is that the rules need to be changed such that the deficits are treated not as a problem but the result of uh, recessions and depressions and that you can you get rid of them through what are called counter cyclical policies what happens is if the european union were to begin to expand the output would go up that's what expansion means output would go up Revenue would increase to the government because people's incomes going up, they, they would pay more taxes and the uh, deficits would uh, uh, disappear over after uh, uh, several years. Situation now is that the rules require if you have a deficit, you have to reduce expenditures or raise taxes. 
That is growth depression, depressing. That is what's called pro-cyclical. That actually weakens what you're trying to do. So what should you change? You change the basic concept of what fiscal policy is supposed to do in the European Union. Well, thank you, John Weeks, for speaking to us from London. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you at home for watching today. We want to know your opinion on the EU treaties, so give us a comment in the box below. Goodbye for now. Oh, <laughs>